What is up guys? Welcome to another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the ASUS ROG Maximus Z890 Hero BTF motherboard. Now this is essentially the same motherboard as the non-BTF version and if you are looking for a BIOS video for the non-BTF version we also have another one here on the channel. Now I would like to say bear with me here I'm pretty sure I have strep throat so gonna struggle through this video a little bit but if you're wondering how do I get to the screen like how do I get to the BIOS when you boot up system or turn on your system for the first time you're just gonna keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard not the backspace the DEL or delete key just keep on hitting that and you'll be dropped into the BIOS and from what I've seen with Asus motherboards if you do have a high-end like a Maximus or a crosshair motherboard you're actually dropped into the advanced mode first that's kind of what you see here but if you did want to get into easy mode if, if you don't want to drop down into all of the settings all you have to do to toggle it is you just hit f7 so we hit f7 and now we have our easy mode so again this shows us right here all of the information on our board the version of the bios that we're running our processor our speed of our processor and our memory that we have installed in the speed especially our DRAM status right here over here we have a live view of our CPU temperature motherboard temperature and our voltages right here for our P and E cores storage information so all the drives you have connected to the motherboard are going to be right here XMP now if you did need to enable an XMP profile we already have it enabled but all you do is you just toggle it right there super easy to do Intel rapid st storage technology you can toggle that on and off right here fan profiles this shows you all of the fans that you have connected to the motherboard and the speeds that they are running there so really easy to go ahead and do that as well and we have our CPU fan curve that you can see here now you can click in and go to Q fan control and this gives you the ability to easily tune each one of those fan headers you can select them over here you get an eight point uh curve that you can do as well which is a upgrade from what asus had previously um and you can set everything up really easily to go ahead and do it and it's a nice graphical interface so you can kind of see what you're doing you can also just set the fans to like a certain mode like silent turbo full speed or manual as well so really nice that you have that you have ai overclocking if you wanted to enable it you can easily do it right here and then you have your boot priority so if you had more than one drive here you could drag and drop these to set your boot priority and you have the option right here to click in to the boot menu now up here you can like change your date and time you can set your language you have aioc which again goes into the ai overclocking mode there's a search which is really nice too so if you're looking for a certain setting you can actually just search for it this allows you to essentially toggle the rgb lighting not only on the board itself but on the headers completely on or off so that's the aura and then you have resizable bar so if you want to turn that on or off you can toggle that right here also new with z890 motherboards is the q dashboard so you can click this or hit the insert button on your keyboard and this gives you sort of like a big overview of the entire board itself so you can see you know we have the front of the board at the back of the board and again this is the btf version so we have all the connectors on the back of the board and if we hover over one of these we can see you know what we have installed so for our cpu this is a core ultra 9 285k we can see the speed that it's running at and if we have ai overclocking on or off say like for our graphics card here again we can see we have an rtx 4080 super even our usb ports like if we go over here we can see we have a wired gaming mouse um it's kind of a generic mouse that i'm running so i don't know if it would detect it but you can see for our keyboard it knows that i have the corsair k55 core rgb and the cool thing about this too is you know you get this overview you can see what's being detected you can see what you have installed but also say we go to like our m.2 slot where we have our drive if i ever want to change settings i can just click and it's going to drop me in to the advanced settings for whatever i click on so i really really like that as well it just makes it really easy to get the things if you're not really sure where to find it in the menus now going back to easy mode that's essentially 
what you're getting on easy mode of course you can load your defaults you can save and exit and then you can jump into advanced mode which we will go into so again you can click here or hit f7 on your keyboard and advanced mode is going to give you everything like this has so many settings it's kind of crazy but this will give you everything that you're going to have now the main tab here is just going to give you all of your information so again your BIOS information, all of that stuff, your processor information. You can go into security and set an administrator password as well as a user password there. Um, and then you do have a My Favorites. So if there are certain settings, any setting that's in the BIOS, you can add to your My Favorites. So it's just all gonna be right here. So you don't have to jump through a bunch of menus to change things. You can put it all in your My Favorites menu if you want to. Now the tab that I think most people who are going into the advanced mode will be under is going to be Extreme Tweaker. This is where you're gonna do all of your system tuning. So one thing I always like about ASUS's BIOS is that it does give you your targets. So if you're gonna change some settings here, it's gonna let you know your performance targets. So like 5700 megahertz, 5400 megahertz, everything, it tells us what we're shooting for. So if you make a change, you can kind of see, you don't have to like do it in your head. We used to have to do that with older motherboards. So I really like that. Um, for performance preferences, you can set Intel default settings or ASUS Advanced OC Profile. Now, the Intel default settings, you do have performance and extreme. If we change these, it will let you know what it's actually going to do. So, when you again, when you change one of these, it's going to tell you what it's going to do, which I kind of like because sometimes you're just like, okay, what does the extreme setting mean? I don't even know. So, it's nice that you have that here. Um, you know, and you can again change them back. It's going to let me know what the performance setting does. So really like that. Um, again, just gives you more information and allows you to learn if maybe this is your first time going into like the advanced uh, mode on a BIOS in general. AI overclock tuning. Again, this for most people, you just set this to XMP1, but you can do auto manual XMP2 or XMP tweaked. NPU boost. You can turn this on or on if you want. BCLK mode. Again, most people, you're just going to set this to auto as we go down here. Again, you have your XMP, which you can easily go ahead and select. You have your ASUS multi-core enhancement, uh, performance core ratio, specific performance core ratio. Um, it can set all of those for all the cores. Um, same thing with your efficiency cores. You can set all of those as well. But again, this is where you're going to do all of your tuning. And again, you can do things with your memory here. Uh, your AVX related controls are going to be here. Your DRAM timing controls are all going to be here as well. There's specific memory presets as well. If you're having trouble, you know, booting with certain memory kits, there's also dim fit. And this will essentially allow you to kind of help you boot if you're having trouble with certain memory kits. So I definitely like that as well. Um, and then you have all of your timings. All of your timings are gonna be right here and, and you can change all of this if you want to. Memory tra training algorithms are in here, but again, all, just, this is just all timings as I scroll down here. Again, you can see we can scroll for quite a while, but again, all the settings that have to do with your memory are gonna be right here. Digi plus VRM, of course, again, this is gonna be power stuff. So you can change like your load line calibrations here all your CPU currents and everything like that. It's all gonna be right in here. And then our internal CPU power management. Again, that's all of your like ICC max and other things if you wanna change, if you are gonna go ahead and overclock. And again, it lets you know like your current uh, power limits and things like that. So again, it does give you all of the information that you do need um, for all of this, but that is all going to be right in here. Thermal velocity boost. You can go into that and change that if you want. Max voltage limits. So you can set your max voltages for your P cores, your E cores, your GT max, your ring max. All of that is just all right in here. Performance core, VF point offsets. Again, you can change that. Efficiency core, same thing. Those off as well. You have Tweaker's Paradise, which again has a ton of different things if you're going into deep overclocking and certain things that you want to do. Uh, Asus is one of the few manufacturers that really give you all of this, like just deep, deep things that you can go ahead and change. AI features, um, just let you know, processor utilization, all that kind of stuff. You can like calibrate your cooler that you have here. 
um, that you have installed, which is really, really nice as well. But there's just like so much in here um, that you can go ahead and do. And then you have all of your race, all of your ratios. So your cash ratios, graphics ratios, um, all of that stuff. And again, your voltages are all going to be here as well. So if you just wanted to change your DRAM voltage, you can do that. You can go into advanced memory voltages and dive deep down into all of that as well. But Asus, like I said, it's one of the few brands that give you essentially every setting that you would ever want to finally tune your system, whether you're overclocking, whether you're just changing voltages, whether you're undervolting, whatever it is, it's all here in Extreme Tweaker. And again, there's so many settings and different menus and all of that. Um, and again, I, like I always say, I think if you have settings that you're changing a lot, instead of jumping through all the menus, just add them to the My Favorites. Now, under Advanced here, if we go back, let's go back. There we go. Under Advanced, we have everything else that's on the board and you have settings for each one of these things. So I'll go through them very quickly. So Platform Misconfiguration, you can see all of our different settings there. CPU configuration, again, that's everything to do with the CPU and you can change your uh, per core control and, and do all of that right there. System agent configuration, and then this will give you like your memory configuration, your graphics configuration, if you need to and you know turn internal graphics on or off, VMD setup menu, and PCI Express configuration. Again, you can see your link speeds and, and do all of that right here. PCH configuration, and again, that's your different link speeds and, and everything. PCH storage configuration. So again, this is like your SATA ports and, and all of that. You can enable or disable those by each port. You can you know change different settings. PCH firmware configuration, T -T TPM device selection. You can enable or disable that. Thermal configuration. That says Intel uh, Innovative Platform Framework. You can enable or disable that. Trusted computing, again, this is for if you had a TPM device, you can set all of that up. UEFI variable protection, you can turn that on or off. PCI subsystem settings, that's where resizable bar is if you do need to change it, but again, we have the quick change right here. USB configuration, again, this allows you to, you know, basically have each port on the board and you can enable or disable it. So if you did need to disable certain ports for some reason, you can go ahead and do that. And then your network stack configuration, NVMe configuration. Um, you can see we have an NVMe drive installed and we can get information on that. We can run self test and do all of that. Um, HDD smart information. We don't have any uh, standard hard drives installed. APM configuration, Thunderbolt configuration, and uh, a ASUS USB 4 add-on card configuration. Again, we don't have that. Uh, onboard devices configuration. This is essentially everything else. So if you did want to like disable the LAN controllers or the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth, this also allows you to set different settings for the LEDs on the board. So again, you can kind of set those if you want to. And then we just have Intel rapid storage technology as well. Again, we don't have any normal hard drives connected here. Under monitor, we can see our temperatures. If we click on temperature monitor, we can see our temperatures here in real time. Fan speeds, again, we can see those in real time. Voltages, same thing, can see, see them in real time. And this really helps because if you're having some issues, you can go through these and really check um, everything. I know Windows like monitoring tools aren't necessarily incredibly accurate. So these will be, I would think, would be a little bit more accurate. QFAN configuration. This is the same thing that I showed you just without the graphical interface. So this gives you everything um, that you can do with that. Go back and then CPU temperature LED switch. So this will allow the CPU temperature to be shown on the postcode display. So once you get past the BIOS and you're loaded into Windows, your CPU temperature will actually show on the postcode display. So if you wanna turn that on or off, you can go ahead and do that. Under boot, you can go into secure boot and set that up. You can have your, of course, your boot configuration and all the different settings for that. And then you have your boot options. You can just select through those. Again, we only have one boot device connected currently. And then you do have boot override. And I always talk about this, but if you're installing Windows, you want to boot override to the Windows installation media, which should be a flash drive. And then when your system restarts the next time, it won't reboot to that flash drive. It will reboot to what you have in your boot option one, which is great. Under tools, 
Um, you have Asus Easy Flash. This allows you to easily flash your BIOS. Super simple to do. Um, you have Asus Secure Array. So this will allow you to easily secure a race in NVMe SSD. Uh, again, the BIOS Q dashboard, which I did show you. The Asus SPD information will give you all the SPD information on your installed memory. User profile, my hotkey, Asus Driver Hub. So Asus is using Driver Hub for whenever you first you know, boot into Windows, it's gonna load up Driver Hub, detect everything, and download the appropriate drivers. So you can enable or disable this. I think for most people, it's just easier to leave it on because then it's just gonna download all your drivers in one swoop and then you won't have to like download them all individually on the ASUS website, but you can enable or disable that right here. And that is everything in the, under tools. And then exit, you can load optimize defaults, save changes and reset, discard changes and exit. And of course, launch EFI shell from USB drives. I did mention you have a full on um, hardware monitor on the side here, as well as your prediction, again, telling you, um, you know, kind of what you're shooting for over here. But overall, you know, if you're going into easy mode, it has everything that you need from setting your XMP to, to making sure it's detecting your storage and all of that. But then again, if you do go into advanced and the extreme tweaker, there's so many different settings here. And like I said, it's really easy to just add your specific settings that you want to change to your My Favorites menu. So it's just like if you change five settings that are in five different spots in the BIOS, they can all be right here, which I really, really like. This BIOS has always been snappy. Like the Asus BIOS is always very snappy. Haven't had really any issues with it. And like I said, um, it just makes everything really easy. And I really like that Asus gives you all of the different settings. So if you have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy this video or got something out of it, I would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and we'll see you guys in the next video.